And uh, before we get, I wanted to obviously ask you about uh, a couple of things in the heavyweight division. But we had John in here today, uh, and he said, uh, you know, I asked him about the Liddell Twitter thing because uh, he said now he's not going to address Chuck on Twitter um, anymore. And I'm taking it you did see that fight. I'm not sure if you watched it. I, I was up in my house in Maine. I saw it on the internet, the ne- on the uh, you know social media the next day. Uh, we're talking, of course, about you know Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz, and uh, obviously they, they the uh, I'm sure Chuck wanted to do that fight in the UFC. Uh, how do you feel about that fight going on? <laughs> Listen, I-, I love Chuck Liddell, and I don't ever want to badmouth Chuck Liddell or even you know people even think I'm remotely badmouthing Chuck Liddell. But the reality is. First of all, let, let's, let's, let's say this first. I, I, I heard last week the cokehead, Oscar De La Weirdo, <laughs> is, is, is talking shit that, that, that I don't have any, uh, you know, place to tell guys when to retire. You know, I don't tell friends when. First of all, it's called friendship. Friendship, you fucking cokehead. I've been friends with, with Chuck Liddell, you know, for, for, for 20 years. And... The reality is that Chuck Liddell retired when he should have retired, eight, nine years ago, however long it was. Um, and Chuck Liddell is almost 50 years old and has no business fighting anymore. And the fact that the, that the state of California even let that fight happen is disgusting. Disgusting. <clears throat> um, you know, uh, and... Uh, you know, Chuck Liddell has an incredible legacy. He's a huge superstar in this sport. You know, so of course, as a friend, anybody who claims to be a friend of Chuck Liddell and was anywhere near this fight is full of shit. They're not a friend of Chuck Liddell. To let him go in and fight this fight is it, terrible. And it's not a case. Um, it's not a case of you telling him to retire early. Uh, you know, obviously, you guys were very close, and you don't want to see him get hurt. That's exa- the problem. Is Chuck Liddell is a fighter. Chuck Liddell loves to fight. That's, that's his passion. It's what he loves in life, you know. But there comes a day and age. Fighting is a young man's game. You can't do it. You know, and Oscar fucking De La Hoya says, uh, you know, oh, come over to Golden Boy where, where we respect the fighters and it makes me sick what, what these fighters were paid and, and all this shit. Out of 14 fights on the card, five bouts were amateur fights, which means he didn't pay him jack shit, right? Right. And 12 of the professional fighters on the card made less than three and three. What the fuck are you talking about, you cokehead junkie? And, 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 and some of the guys on the card made a thousand and a thousand. And, and you know what? He, he respects the fighters so much, he couldn't even rem- remember their fucking names at the press conference. Yeah, he was saying that, imagine if you would have told George Foreman or Bernard Hopkins, but those guys are, are very, very rare exceptions. How about Meldrick Taylor or what happened to Ali? You know, there's so many more cases of fighters who get hurt badly and who wind up in terrible shape by fighting too long than the very, very rare exceptions who make it through okay. Exactly. I hope somebody talks De La Hoya into fighting again, okay? I hope the state of California makes the fight and I hope he gets fucking knocked out just like Chuck Liddell did in the first round. Fucking cokehead nutball. Well, you know, Tito even said afterwards that he would not have let Chuck fight. Yeah. T- Tito's in the... D- d- listen, t- Tito, Tito and, and, and Oscar De La Dummy were made for each other, man. Those two fucking nutheads. First of all, t- t- Tito says, hey, you guys want to get paid? Come over to... to, to uh, come over to... Golden Boy MMA. Are you kidding me? Hey, my brother, wait a couple months till this whole thing pans out. Everybody's going to be suing everybody in a couple months. There was no money made over there. De La Hoya is a moron, an absolute moron. And I don't know how Chuck allowed himself to be talked into this stupid shit. You know, it's probably just one of those things where he wanted to fight and Oscar De La Hoya told him what he wanted to hear. Yeah. I agree with you, unfortunately. Have you talked to Chuck at all in the lead up or since the fight? Have you guys? I did. I talked to him before the fight, but I haven't talked to him since. You know, I, I'm, I'm at least going to give the guy a couple days, and and uh, I'll give him a call this week. Yeah, I mean, and when and when you say, when he, when he says something like, "Well, who's to tell fighters?" I mean, like, that's like saying, "Why have a ref? Who's to tell fighters when they're not knocked?" Out? I mean, you know, there are people around you who well, kind of have to well, look well, out. Well, you know, you know who tells a fighter when it's time to hang up? His friend. That's who tells him when it's time to hang it up.
That's right. I mean, Joe told, uh, there's a famous, uh, where Joe and Brendan Schaub were talking and Joe told him, look, I don't know if you can do this anymore. And it's, I'm sure a very hard conversation to have with a guy that you respect, but the, the fact that you care about him has got to come above possibly hurting his feelings or pissing him off. 100%. Do you 100%. Think, do you think this is purely financial for Chuck or do you think that there was a combination of just wanting to get in there again? Cause eight years, a long layoff. Uh, listen, Chuck Liddell is a fighter, man. Chuck, when, when I asked Chuck to retire, he didn't want to either, you know. Um, he should have retired when he did, and he should have stayed retired. Um, but like, like the cokehead said, you know, Chuck's a grown man and can do whatever he wants to do. But that's when the state of California has to step in and protect the fighter from himself. Yeah, and didn't De La Hoya at first, wasn't he knocking the whole Conor Floyd thing? And then after he saw how popular it was that he said he wanted to step in and fight yeah. Conor? Yeah, no, that, that's, what, that's what started this whole thing with me and him. I had always liked Oscar, respected him, you know, talked about his fights and stuff. Then the guy comes out and starts ripping Conor McGregor versus uh, uh, Floyd. Then as soon as the fight's over, he says, now he wants to fight Conor McGregor. This, this, guy is, this guy needs to check himself into rehab immediately. Do you, do you think that's what He's it is? He's standing up at a press conference, rubbing his hands, talking about how cold he is, and that he doesn't know any of the fighters, doesn't know any of their names. The main event, he doesn't even know how to say Chuck Liddell. What do you think he's doing in MMA? Do you, do you think it's just the way he th he's a little late and he figures he can make money off it? Or it I think he's snorting a ton of cocaine. And uh, Google him. <laughs> Google him. I think he's snorting a ton of cocaine and doing a lot of other things. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I don't even think he's involved in any of this stuff. I think there's a bunch of people behind the scenes who really do all the work and put this together for him. He snorts about 12 pounds of coke when he gets up in the morning and just shows up where they tell him to show up. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is uh, it is weird to hear him try to get into the it seems like to, to get into it and then just say how how uh, you know and then stay on the other side and try to be a competitor. Uh, he just I think just wants to get into the game and he's probably a little bit too late. It's it's not even that he's too late. He, he's not smart enough to get into the game. He's not smart enough, and, and, and he doesn't have the work ethic. This guy's a total, uh, uh, you know, he's doing other things. He's doing recreational things that are keeping him from even thinking about competing. You know what I mean? Uh, you show up to a press conference, at least, at the very least, I'll give you this one, at least know how to say the main event's name. Okay? Yeah. Let alone, he literally lines up a bunch of guys behind him. He's like, uh, yeah, I don't really know any of these guys or their names. Well, how about you write it down on a fucking piece of paper, you dope? Yeah. Okay? He write it down on a piece of paper and read the piece of paper. You know? Well, you uh, know. <laughs> he is, uh, this guy is, has no shame. He's unbelievable. I, I, I just, some of the things that this guy has done, I would disappear and you'd never see me again. He doesn't give a shit. He jumps right back up there talking well, in front of the media. He's hilarious. Well, hopefully, you know, hopefully Chuck, you know, and again, I love Chuck too. He's one of the first fighters I ever interviewed. I have a lot of respect for Chuck. He's a legend. And again, these guys, it's very hard for them to step away. I'm, I'm sure like the rush of, of walking in, you know, when he used to come out, even at events, when I'd see him, when he was, had a job for UFC, just whenever he walked into the arena, the place would explode. And it just, it's got to be very hard for guys to walk away from that. But you still. It is, yeah, it's very hard. And one of the things that, again, bums me out is my thing was there's no way I'm. First of all, I don't want to make $1 of this kind of money. Right. I do right. not. I've said that since day one. Um, you know, when I mean day one, 17 years ago. Number two is my, my backup, which I was hoping is. No major state will sanction this fight. That's not going to happen. Because, because all the big states like Nevada, California, New York, whatever, they, they have athletic commissions. No athletic commission, major athletic commission is going to sanction this fight. Wrong. Wrong. Yeah. Did they so try I was hoping this thing would end up, you know, they're going to be in, you know, Kentucky somewhere trying to make this fight, and the fight would never come off. I didn't know Kentucky California was going to happen. Did, uh, I didn't see that coming. Did, did Dana? Did they try it in uh, New York or in um, Vegas? Or? They didn't have to. They, 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 they were the Oscar De La 
uh, knucklehead, and, 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 and California took it immediately. California didn't even blink at that fight. Yeah, and you... Are you kidding me? How many, how many first-round knockouts has Tito... How many knockouts has Tito had in his career? Standing knockouts like that. None. Chuck Liddell should have never been in that fight. All the fans were talking about it leading up to the, uh, you know, just watching footage. Did anybody from the Athletic Commission show up to watch him spar or anything like that? It's just, uh, it's terrible, man. You know, and the fans yeah. love Chuck. And I think one reason even fans still want to see somebody fight, it's almost like when you, when you want to see your favorite band, a reunion, watching them reminds you of how you were 10 years ago, too. So it brings people back. And it's, I, I don't, I, I, it's a spectacle. And people are like, hey, if he's still fighting, then I'm not as old as I thought I was. But uh, the UFC could have made probably a good money off doing this fight. And you guys obviously declined it because, like you said, you don't want to make money on that. Never. Never. Well, hopefully, Never, man. hopefully he's okay. And, and, and the thing is, for a guy like Chuck, obviously, 